Online game, I possess a monster merging simulator. Chapter 91, Dragon Soul Damn human, you're infuriating the great lich. The boss let out an angry roar, as if it had not expected its health to drop so quickly. In just two minutes, it had lost one third of its health. That was close to 70,000 health points. To think that this weak human could force it to such a state. It was unforgivable. When its health decreased to a certain extent, a ball of thick black flames rose from the boss's body. The two scarlet soul flames that represented its eyes stared at Lorne fiercely like fiery red lanterns. Revive, you lowly skeletons. Come out, undead wandering in the world. I bestow upon you bloodthirst and zeal. The furious boss used two skills at the same time. Due to its special skill, the number of monsters summoned on the spot had also increased greatly. After using two skills, the number of monsters in the scene instantly reached nearly 300. Each one was incomparably crazy. After receiving the order, they all rushed towards Lorne. Unfortunately, despite the 50% increase in movement speed, they were still too slow. They could not even reach small artillery. It was impossible for them to catch up to Lorne, who was equipped with Angel's Wings and had also added four agility points each level. Minus 1,615. Minus 207. Minus 1,609. Minus 2,600. Critical. Minus 4,500. Critical. Lorne controlled small artillery to fire as he retreated. The nearly 300 monsters in front of him were useless against the perfect kiting. Of course, they also bought some time for the boss to recover. At this moment, the boss was madly absorbing the undead's energy to recover its health. However, the boss's healing was not as strong as the first undead mage he fought. It took two minutes to recover 40,000 health points. That was pointless. Lorne quickly cleared away the monsters, but he kept about ten of them around. This was to maintain the duration of the frenzied shooting. Within 20 seconds, as long as another monster is killed, the cooldown period would be refreshed again for 20 seconds. Lorne extended the duration of frenzied shooting by using the 10 monsters. Seeing that it could not do anything to the human adventurer, the lich boss could only summon the skeleton mages who were casting dark magic to its side. Then, it attacked Lorne with a barrage of magic. But that could not change the situation. After another three minutes, the boss's health was down to 20%. Unwilling to give up, the lich boss summoned another few hundred monsters. However, Lorne was not anxious at all. He still followed his previous strategy and eliminated all the monsters before focusing his attention on the lich boss. 10% 5% When the boss's health decreased to 5%, Lorne paused. This was all due to the subconscious usage of the monster merging simulator. Unfortunately, the monster before him did not have any merits that attracted Lorne. Like the undead mage, the lich also had a huge requirement for the territory. Once it left the relatively large area of the skeletons, its combat strength would decrease by at least half. Although the lich was hard to deal with, that was because there were too many monsters here. If it were in Iron Skull City, Lorne would have been able to kill it easily in less than two minutes. After some thought, he decided to kill it. It took a lot of time and effort to raise a boss pet. For example, the EXP needed to raise Rimuru would make any informed player's scalp tingle. From level 10 to level 20, it needed more than a million experience points. This was too terrifying. Even Lorne needed a day to accumulate that amount. If another boss came, the workload would double again. Therefore, when choosing the next boss level pet, he had to consider carefully before making the final decision. He had to forget about a boss like the Lich. Slash. While thinking, Lorne fired an arrow that accurately struck the boss's head and dealt an extremely terrifying critical damage. The boss let out a miserable cry after its health was depleted. After losing its origin power, its body could no longer gather. Soon, 
it turned into a pile of rotten bones that scattered on the ground and died completely. Crash! A large number of equipment, gold coins, and skill books dropped from the corpse of the Lich Boss. Ding! Congratulations on killing the Boss Lich above your level. EXP plus 20, 000, plus 40,000. Ding! Congratulations on discovering that the Lich is using undead magic on the corpse of the dragon. It seems to have an ulterior motive. Please inform the Dragon of Light, Hamet, of this discovery. You will receive its reward. Two notifications popped up. Killing the boss alone gave Lorne 60,000 experience points. Indeed, killing bosses was the best way to get rich. In addition, he had received a special mission. He would be rewarded if he told the Dragon of Light about this. He wondered if there would be some important mission behind this. With that in mind, Lorne looked forward to it. Then, Lorne began to clean up the battlefield. The loot from a level 30 boss was very rich. 8 gold coins. 6 bronze items. 2 pieces of silver equipment. They were all level 30 equipment and could be sold for a good price in the next few days. There were also some gems scattered on the ground. 17 bronze grade enhancement gems. 5 silver grade enhancement gems. Because many people could not afford silver equipment, the current bronze grade enhancement gem should have a huge market. One could be sold for 300 alliance dollars. Silver grade enhancement gems could be sold for 1000 alliance dollars. Therefore, this was a very good income. As he put all the loot into his bag. Suddenly. An ancient voice sounded, my soul has finally been freed. The voice came from the center of the palace. Wisps of white energy were rising from the dragon skeleton. They gradually gathered together, forming a huge dragon made of energy. Chapter 92, Fire Dragon Crystal The soul of the dragon is not to be sullied. We are the guardians of the Order faction, but those abominable liches attempted to corrode the soul of the dragon and condense the dragon skeleton into a terrifying undead bone dragon. The dragon's soul crouched on the dragon's skull, giving off an ancient aura. It looked at Lorne with a friendly expression, Human, thank you for your help. You saved my soul. There's no need to be polite. As a guardian of the Order faction, I have the duty to protect the souls of the dead. Lorne replied respectfully. Although it was only a spiritual body, it was still a giant dragon's soul. If he could build a good relationship with it, he might even be able to obtain some rewards. Hearing this, the dragon could not help but size him up again. The next second, its eyes lit up. You actually gained the recognition of a great dragon. Moreover, there seems to be an energy aura that I'm very familiar with. Is this what you're talking about? Lorne activated Angel's Descent, an incomparably holy power immediately spread from his body. The dragon's soul bathed in the holy light and seemed to be moistened. It was much more spirited. Unfortunately, Lorne's angel form could not last long. Moreover, the divine power points were very precious. He only had 20 points per day. Therefore, he only used it for a few seconds before cancelling the skill. I didn't expect you to obtain the recognition of the Dragon of Light. The dragon soul looked at Lorne with satisfaction and said, Although you are still very weak, since you have obtained the power of light, I will give you another gift. With that, a force burst from the dragon soul and poured on Lorne. Ding! Congratulations on obtaining the blessing of the dragon soul, divine power plus two. Congratulations on obtaining the gift of the dragon soul, fire dragon crystal, fragment, x1. Congratulations on obtaining the gift of the dragon soul, dragon's reverse scale, damaged, x1. Congratulations on obtaining the recognition of the dragon soul, dragon race of order reputation points plus 100. A series of notifications appeared. Lorne's divine power limit increased from 20 points to 22 points. This reward alone was enough to make him happy. However, the dragon soul was too polite and even gave him three rewards. 
first was the fire dragon crystal. This was one of the rarest materials in the divine realm. Only the corpses of dead dragons would produce a small quantity of them. Fire Dragon Crystal, Fragment Grade, Legendary Introduction, A special crystal condensed from a giant dragon's corpse. It is an extremely rare treasure among the various races, especially among the goblins. They desire dragon crystals very much. This was a legendary material. Even if it was only a tenth of a fragment, it was still worth a lot. Especially when it was in the hands of Lorne. If he used this dragon crystal fragment to merge monsters in the future, the pet he would obtain would definitely be incomparably powerful. If it inherited the dragon's power, it would be even more incredible. In addition, there was another material reward. Dragon's Reverse Scale, Damaged Grade, Legendary Introduction the hardest dragon scale on a giant dragon. However, due to its long existence, its energy has been depleted. It is only a relatively harder dragon scale now. It was indeed another legendary material. Although there was no energy left, it was hard enough and had a good effect. Lorne put the two materials away and looked at the dragon soul again. To be precise, he looked at the dragon skeleton behind it. After the dragon soul was separated, the dragon skeleton completely weathered, becoming a pile of fossils, losing its original luster. There's no need to be surprised. It's not a complete dragon skeleton. It's just some dragon bones that the undead lich brought out from the doomsday forest and forcefully assembled. That's why it used such a strange undead magic to condense the dragon skeleton into a special bone dragon. Sensing Lorne's gaze, the dragon soul explained. Lorne immediately asked a key question, then, Sir Dragon, I want to know if there are true dragon skeletons. The mission that the Dragon of Light gave me is to bring back enough dragon souls and dragon skeletons so that the deceased dragons can bathe in the holy light and obtain true freedom. If he could obtain the relevant information, at the very least, he would not want to wander around the forest like a headless fly. Even if he could obtain a rough direction, it would make the subsequent search more efficient. This, the dragon soul fell into deep thought, the war back then was too chaotic. The entire Iron Skull City and the icy plains of Calamity attacked each other, and the battlefield was too vast. Coupled with the fact that too much time had passed, I can no longer remember the exact location. However, I still vaguely remember that Lord Walter's dragon army was near the Lake of Death facing the army of the undead from the Dark Abyss. Perhaps you can go in that direction. With that, the dragon soul gradually turned transparent. Lorne quickly absorbed it with the dragon's treasure vault. This was a mission tool. It could preserve the dragon souls and dragon skeletons so that they could maintain their current state and not dissipate into the world. An assembled dragon skeleton. Can this be used to synthesize monsters? Lorne arrived in front of the dragon skeleton. Although it was a corpse, he could still feel the pressure from the dragon. He tried to choose this dragon skeleton as the prototype material. But then... Ding! The target cannot be synthesized as a prototype monster. Indeed, it could not. As the first condition for the prototype monster, it had to be a living monster. Of course, this dragon skeleton could not. As for the dragon soul, Lorne secretly used his skill once. However, the notification he received was that the target was a special mission character and could not be chosen. It was probably due to the influence of the Dragon of Light that this result was like this. Lorne did not feel any emotion because of this. After all, this was just an attempt. It did not matter if it failed. After all, he was already strong enough to crush everyone else so there was no need to worry about it. In addition, this assembled dragon skeleton could not be considered a mission target. Therefore, in the tomb, Lorne only obtained the soul of a dragon. Near the Lake of Death, Lorne opened the map. The Lake of Death was at the edge of the Doomsday Forest. Only a portion of the area was located in the zone of the War Ruins. If he went deeper north, 
he would reach cold desolate Dragon City and stand at the border with the icy plains of Calamity. He had to ignore that for the time being, it was more important to kill the monsters. Otherwise, he would not be able to complete the goal before dawn. Chapter 93, Merge Greedy Long Tongue Bat In a valley in the barbarian forest, in the gathering spot of a monster. Lorne commanded his pets to fire at a swarm of disgusting forest lizards. Unlike the marsh crocodile, these monsters were only level 23 and were easier to kill. Moreover, the forest lizards liked to gather in the shade, which made it very convenient for Lorne. While killing the monsters, Lorne also paid attention to the situation in the ruins of the war. He realized that the players of the large guilds had already entered the ruins. There were already people collecting bones and skeletons. Some guilds marked the price of the skeletons, wanting to use this opportunity to raise their reputation in the Order faction. So rich. Lorne smiled coldly as he watched them purchase information like maniacs. These rich people always liked to play games. Although there was no monetary conversion system in the game, they could persuade other players to work for them. Therefore, there was no such thing as fairness in this world. Ding. You have killed a forest lizard. Ding. 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 In the dark valley, Lorne fought for more than an hour. During this period, he obtained a large amount of bronze coins, hundreds of lizard skins, and a large amount of low-quality equipment that he could only sell. By this time, Aisha's fusion had reached 70%. There were still four hours before dawn. It was not difficult to complete the goal. Lorne did not stop. He led the way to the other side of the hill, where a group of strange, greedy dwarfs wandered. They held stone axes and robbed all the creatures they encountered. Unfortunately, these dwarfs were only ordinary level 25 monsters. They could not kill a rich human adventurer like Lorne. On the contrary, the two pets, Small artillery and venom, hunted the ugly dwarfs crazily on both sides of the hill. Ding! Congratulations on obtaining the material, Heart of Greed. As he cleaned up the battlefield, Lorne obtained an interesting material. Heart of Greed? It was a good name. It felt grand and mighty. Let's find a monster to merge. Lorne was interested in the material. In any case, there was no need to keep the other party as a pet. If he really did not like it, he could release it when the time came. He put away the materials and continued forward. Finally, after clearing a cave in the wilderness, Lorne discovered an interesting monster. They were a group of talking bat monsters. It was called the Long Tongue Bat. When he saw the monster, Lorne immediately thought of the scout position. If there was a flying pet in the team, it would be more efficient to find monsters in the future, and there would be no need to wander around aimlessly like this. There was not much to say. He would try to synthesize it first. Lorne grabbed a long-tongued bat and threw it into the synthesis formula. Then, he searched through his bag for the synthesized materials. There were many materials that could be synthesized. But not many were suitable. Lorne could only choose some muscles that increased its strength, and then he threw in a heart of greed. Ding! A prototype material and body part materials have been confirmed. The synthesis formula is, long tongue bat, plus, jungle panther's muscle, plus, heart of greed, equals. The cost is one gold coin. Would you like to merge? This actually cost one gold coin? The cost of the merge surprised Lorne. To be honest, these materials were very low level. The prototype monster was only an ordinary monster, but he did not expect it to have such high potential. Merge. Lorne quickly answered. The next moment, the system notification sounded. Ding. Congratulations on obtaining a bronze grade monster, greedy long tongue bat. With that, the light at the scene dissipated. What appeared in front of Lorne was a huge bat that looked a little human. It was covered in thick skin and had no fur. Its human-like face was very wretched, and it looked like an overly smart merchant. 
As for its tail, it was very long and thin. This entire body looked very different from ordinary bats. If he wanted to let Lorne judge, he wanted to classify the creature as part of the manta ray category. The moment the greedy long-tongued bat saw Lorne, it immediately said respectfully, Oh, my dear master, thank you for your help. Please let me stay by your side and contribute my strength. Looking at such an active pet, even Lorne could not help but be stunned. Then he shook his head and smiled. Lorne was not sure what he had created, but he had a feeling that this guy was not normal at all. Greedy long tongue bat, contract possible. Grade, bronze. Level, 1, 0 slash 1200. HP, 1500 slash 1500. Magic attack, 150 to 220. Defense, 50. Superiority, 94%. Introduction, a greedy long-tongued bat. Don't let it hear your secret, or else you will have to give it enough gold coins to shut it up. The attributes are not bad. Lorne nodded, surprised. Perhaps because the monsters in the main city had stronger basic attributes, the monsters that were created in the end also had attributes that were far superior to before. As a silver monster, small artillery only had 260 attack points at level 1. It only had 40 more attack points than the long tongue bat. It seemed that the synthesis formula was very good, this could be seen from the superiority level. Pets that reached 90% superiority were very successful examples. Should I swap out Little Mantis? Lorne rubbed his chin in thought. Little Mantis was basically useless in battle. If the long tongue bat replaced it, the damage output of the team might not increase, but their investigative ability would definitely increase greatly. With that in mind, Lorne decided to switch pets. However, the quality of the long tongue bat in front of him was slightly inferior. Under the previous hill, Lorne had obtained a few higher quality hearts of greed, so he wanted to create a better quality long tongue bat. Ding! Congratulations on obtaining a bronze grade monster, greedy long tongue bat. Congratulations on obtaining an elite monster, greedy long tongue bat. Congratulations on obtaining an ordinary monster, greedy long tongue bat. Congratulations on obtaining the silver monster, greedy long tongue bat. After more than an hour, Lorne finally created a long tongue bat that he was satisfied with. The moment he had the scout, Lorne had been eager to test its effect. The long tongue bats that he created earlier were released and seemed to have smelled gold coins as they rushed into the ruins. Then, one great tragedy happened after the other. As they listened to the secrets of the monsters and players, many were soon blackmailed. Chapter 94, Holy Angel Gabriel Hey, Master! There's a pack of jungle wolves 300 meters to the east of the forest. Kakik, this is too interesting. There's a group of sleeping red-spotted pigs at the western hilltop. Oh, there are five dwarfs making soup 200 meters ahead. My god, there are more than a hundred small spiders 500 meters to the right. In the following period of time, Lorne's efficiency in killing monsters was very high. All of this came from the information of the long-tongue bat. As a flying scout, it had a unique advantage in finding monsters from above. Although it was limited by the game system, the maximum altitude of the long tongue bat was limited to 10 meters. That did not affect its investigation. Because it was a bat, the long tongue bat could fly quickly in the forest and understand the surrounding situation. When it found a suitable target, Lorne would lead his pets to kill the monster packs. This reduced the time wasted in finding monsters. Soon, it was 10.30 p.m. Lorne fought monsters in the barbarian forest for the entire day. Apart from eating and dealing with his physical needs, he spent the rest of the day in high-intensity combat. Now, he had finally achieved his goal today. A million experience points had been accumulated. At this moment, the last portion of the experience points was being poured into Aisha's body. Fusion progress. 95%. Fusion progress, 
Fusion Progress, 97%. Fusion Progress, 98%. Fusion Progress, 99%. Fusion Progress, 100%. When he injected a million experience points. An extremely pleasant reminder finally sounded in Lorne's ears. Ding! Congratulations to your pet knight elf Aisha for completing the fusion of the crystal heart and regaining its memory. Ding! Congratulations on completing the first stage of the mission Holy Angel's Resurrection. You have received the blessing of the Holy Angel, luck plus 5, free attribute points plus 50. Ding! Congratulations on entering the second stage of your mission Holy Angel's Resurrection. Please bring Aisha to the Elves' Land and let her receive the nourishment of the Ancient Tree of Life to become the purest elemental body. Three consecutive notifications appeared on Lorne's interface. After completing the first phase of the mission, Lorne received a nice reward of 5 luck and 50 free attribute points. It had to be said that the Holy Angel was really generous. In addition, Lorne automatically accepted the second phase of the mission. The mission requirement was to bring Aisha to the Elves' Land to receive the nourishment of the Tree of Life. This was a fatal mission requirement. After all, Lorne had abducted the Elven Princess. After doing such a thing, he still dared to enter their territory to do a mission? Was he courting death? As he thought this, the next moment, a new notification sounded. Ding! It is detected that your pet has a high-level consciousness. As its master, you can enter and check the life experiences of the contracted pet to increase the affinity between the two sides. High-level consciousness? Lorne saw an important term. From the looks of it, the long-tongued bat should have a low-level consciousness. After all, he had not received such a reminder when he subdued it. It's good to go and see the life of the elves. I wonder if it's so exciting. Lorne looked forward to it. Then, he chose to view the memory. The next second, with a flash of light, Lorne reached an empty space. There were countless images around him that recorded Aisha's life at various ages. As expected of a beautiful elf world. When he checked Aisha's childhood memories, Lorne could not help but sigh. In his eyes, he saw a beautiful world. There was the most beautiful forest, the most unique tree house, the fluorescent path, the vine bridge, and various huge plants. As the most favored elf maiden in the entire race, Aisha's childhood was so perfect that it felt dreamlike. But by the time she was 14, everything had changed. A group of terrifying dark elves had entered the land of the night elves. They had once been a member of this race and had contributed to everything here. But now, they were personally destroying the home that they had protected. It was because of this sudden war that the beautiful homes of the Night Elves were destroyed. Moreover, such battles began to revolve around the Night Elves. Sixteen years later, which was recently, the Dark Elves attacked again, launching a fatal assault. Then, everything progressed until now. Elves really live long. They're still so young at thirty years old. Lorne could not help but marvel at Aisha's age. Then. His expression suddenly changed. What's that? Lorne's eyes widened as his gaze focused on a strange scene. This was a scene that was not part of Aisha's life. It was like the end of the world. All the mountains were destroyed, and the rising smoke covered the entire sky. This is the memory of the Holy Angel. That was possible. After all, it was impossible for Aisha to experience such a terrifying thing at such a young age. In that case, could it be that the cause of the death of the Holy Angel was recorded? One had to know that the Holy Angel was in existence with the highest combat strength in the world. Even she had died in the war. It was too curious. Let me see the glory of the Holy Angel. Lorne did not think too much. He only took a deep breath and entered the memory. At that moment, a powerful attraction appeared, sucking Lorne into the world of memory. When he regained his vision, Lorne found himself standing on a dark land. The world before him was in ruins. Wherever his gaze landed, there was no intact land. 
Everything in this world seemed to have been bombarded by missiles. It was silent and lifeless. At that moment, there was a rumble in the sky. Lorne looked up and saw two figures fighting in the sky. One was covered in scarlet blood energy, and the other was a six-winged angel who emitted an extremely holy power of light. The battle between them seemed to have reached its most intense state. An incomparably grand light enveloped the entire world. After an earth-shattering explosion, the two figures in the sky landed in one direction. The angel fell toward Lorne. The black, blood-red figure plummeted towards the border of the land. Standing there, Lorne could clearly see a sparkling angel fall nearby. However, when he walked over to investigate, he found a crystal heart and a black blood-stained feather in the ruins. Chapter 95, Legendary Grade Phantom Assassin It's really her, Holy Angel Gabriel. Lorne took a deep breath as he looked at the destroyed land. Although he had only seen a fragment of the past, the scene before him was enough to make him remember it for the rest of his life. The top forces of this world were too powerful. They truly had the power to destroy the entire world. If this game really had the ability to materialize, then these powerful angels and demons would subvert the civilization on Earth. Even the most powerful nuclear weapons on Earth could not compare to the power they unleashed. But that did not make him feel afraid. On the contrary, he was very excited. He did not care about such a possibility for the time being. However, he wanted to master this power in the game very much. I wonder if the players will be as powerful as them after reaching level 100. With a wistful glance, Lorne withdrew from Aisha's memory. Ding! Due to the foundation of the contract between you and the Night Elf, Aisha, the affinity level is 100 points. The current affinity level is acquaintance. Ding! Due to the monster merging simulator, the basic affinity between you and the Night Elf, Aisha, is 100,000 points. The current affinity level is idolization. Ding! Warning, the affinity of the pet will affect their performance in battle. A high affinity will stimulate the potential of the pet and unleash power beyond its attributes. Therefore, Please maintain a good relationship with your pet. As soon as he left Aisha's memory, Lorne heard a series of notifications. When he heard that the affinity between him and Aisha had reached 100,000 points, Lorne was extremely shocked. This notification had not appeared among all the monsters that he had created previously, and there was no affinity system between him and the previous pets. But now, not only did this system appear, but the initial value had reached 100,000 points. This was too terrifying. After all, he had helped Myra so much previously, but until now, the affinity between the two sides had not exceeded 1,000 points. The difference between 1,000 and 100,000 was 100 times. If not for the monster merging simulator, perhaps Lorne would not have been able to increase his affinity to this level. Is it because of the high-level consciousness as well? Lorne thought for a moment, then was overcome with joy. No matter what the reason was, right now, he and Aisha had 100,000 affinity points. This affinity not only increased Aisha's strength greatly, but it could also do things that surpassed friendship. Previously, Lorne had said that Divine Realm was 100% realistic, almost like a real world. In this world, as long as the game progress reached a certain level, the wisdom of monsters and humans would be no different. Therefore, there was such a humanized setting. As long as the players and NPCs had sufficient affinity, they could do anything, including those shameful acts. However, in order to do that, the affinity between the two sides had to at least reach the level of close friend. Lorne had thought it impossible, but now that idea was wavering. Who are you guys? The elven girl looked curiously at the surrounding pets. Small artillery and venom could not help but take two steps back, their bodies involuntarily feeling fear. Perhaps he was afraid of the aura of the holy angel in her body. Are you ugly monsters also followers of our master? The elf girl did not like the two undeads and the not-so-cute long-tongued bat. 
It was Rimuru on the ground who looked at her curiously that caught her attention. Aisha bent down and picked up the Slime King from the ground. The little guy did not resist and just stayed quietly in Aisha's hand. Looks like slimes are quite popular. Lorne walked up and smiled, Aisha, let Master examine you. Oh, no, check your attributes. Yes, Master. The elven girl looked up at Lorne obediently. The relationship between NPCs and players was very simple. As long as they had a good affinity with each other, they would do whatever they could. Now that there was 100,000 affinity points between Lorne and Aisha, they were only one step away from becoming close friends. The two interacted intimately. It could be seen that this night elf princess, who should have been high up in the air, was enjoying Lorne's touch very much. There was deep trust towards Lorne in her silver eyes. Night Elf, Aisha. Quality? Class, Phantom Assassin, Legendary. Status, Rank 1. Level, 1, 0 slash 10 comma 0 0 0. HP, 62,000, Masters HP times 10. Physical Attack, 2252 to 3664. Master's Magic Attack times 4. Physical Defense, 854, Master's Defense times 2. Superiority, 100%. Owner, Tyrant. Skill, Phantom Backstab, Flicker to the back of the target. The first attack will definitely be a critical hit and increase attack speed by 200%. Duration, 2 seconds. Skill, Traceless Phantom an invisibility type skill. User can be immune to low damage. It will not lose invisibility and will increase movement speed by 100%. Skill, Slow Dagger, all basic attack skills will reduce the target's movement speed by 15%. Skill, Phantom Massacre, for every target killed, the cooldown of the Traceless Phantom skill will be reset, and the next attack will be a critical hit. Skill, Absolute Dodge, there is a 25% chance of dodging any attack. Skill, Elf Companion, when elves sign a contract with other species, their attributes will be affected by their master's attributes. Introduction, a Night Elf Princess with powerful innate abilities. She is a legendary grade phantom assassin. My god. Looking at Aisha's attributes panel, Lorne felt dizzy. Although her health was not as high as Rimuru's. Aisha had an attack limit of 3,600. Even a level 20 silver pet, small artillery, had less than half of Aisha's attack power. This was ridiculous. If he did not consider the effect of level suppression, any one of her attacks could kill an ordinary level 20 monster. If she used her skill, Aisha could instantly deal tens of thousands of damage. This was a level that no pet in Lorne's team could do and it was also a damage that no player or monster could withstand. However, that was not Aisha's most terrifying power. Her true terror lay in the skill Phantom Massacre. As long as Aisha could kill a target, she could stay invisible indefinitely. Think about it. If she killed her way into the enemy archer's ranks, she could kill them with a single slash and keep herself invisible. In such a situation, Aisha alone could quickly slay all of the non-tank class enemies. Just the thought of it was terrifying. Lorne had not expected to obtain such a terrifying pet at this time. Chapter 96, Toward the Expeditionary Army Camp Now that he had an elven princess, he had to teach her well. Aisha, Master will help you raise your level. Lorne still had some experience that could help Aisha raise her level. Really. Aisha blinked her large gem-like eyes, looking very adorable as she said, due to the contract, the elf bond made me lose my original strength. I thought it would be very difficult for me to recover my strength. Of course. Lorne caressed her head gently. Although the experience requirement was very high, it was still relatively easy to raise her level to ten. Without thinking, he poured the tens of thousands of experience points he had into Aisha. Ding! Congratulations! Your pet, Aisha, 
has successfully reached level 2. Obtained, skill points plus 3. Congratulations! Congratulations! There was not many experience points left on Lorne, so he only raised Aisha's level to 4. Unlike other pets, Aisha's attributes did not change. After increasing her level, she only obtained 3 skill points. Due to the fact that she was level 4, there were already 12 skill points on her interface. Without hesitation, Lorne helped her distribute the skill points. Aisha was already very powerful, and high-level skills could allow her damage output to undergo a qualitative change. As for the attributes. In order to raise Aisha's attributes, Lorne needed to raise his own stats. This matter could not change for the time being. After all, he was wearing only a silver set now, and it was difficult for him to level up in a short time. Looks like I need to change it a little in the future. In the past, in order to preserve his life, Lorne had distributed points with the ratio of 3 constitution and 2 agility. But now that he had Aisha, there had to be a change. After some consideration, it seemed that 3 constitution, 4 intelligence and 3 agility was a good ratio. Come, Aisha, let Master help you change some new equipment. Lorne smiled meaningfully. Affinity was to let players integrate into the game so that everyone would forget that this was a virtual world. When one had a high affinity, they would naturally obtain the benefits that belonged to the players. For example, after reaching the level of idolization, he could personally change equipment for pets. Therefore, Lorne led Aisha into the grove and personally equipped her with several excellent leather armor. While changing, the hot-blooded young man, Lorne, could not control his emotions and did something bold to the elf, so he was warned by the system in the next second. Ding! Game announcement, Aisha believes that your relationship is not deep enough for her to progress further. Your frivolous actions have caused her affinity with you to change, dash 1. Affinity, dash 1. Affinity, dash 1. I'm innocent. I just wanted to check Aisha's body. Lorne wanted to cry. Helping Aisha put on her hood, Lorne began leading the elf girl toward the expeditionary army camp. Ding! You have killed a jungle wolf. EXP plus 45, plus 90, dot. Ding! You have killed a forest bull. Ding! Ding! On the way, Lorne did not let go of the opportunity to earn experience. Aisha now had extremely powerful strength, but because her level was too low, she could not join such a battle. In order to achieve a greater victory in the ruins of the war, Lorne had to quickly raise Aisha's level. It would be best if she reached level 20. Only then could the level suppression affect Aisha less. In addition, during this period of time, Lorne kept an eye on the Dragon Soul Compass. Unfortunately, along the way, the dragon soul compass was still, and no dragon soul appeared around it. Not long ago, in Iron Skull City. After the large guilds discovered that there were potions that could neutralize the poison, they immediately sent people to find the antidote in Iron Skull City. But soon, they spat out blood from anger. It was because the entire main city's antidote had been bought. Not only that, but even the main city's Alchemist Association did not sell antidotes. They even publicly stated that all the antidotes in the Alchemist Association had their own distributors. The guild would no longer sell any individuals or organizations. When they heard this news, all the people from the large guilds gritted their teeth. Then, the entire chat channel and forum were occupied by the purchasing agents of large guilds. A large amount of antidote requests to be bought. I am from the Blazing Fire Guild, and the price we offer is high. I would like to purchase an antidote for three silver coins per bottle. The quantity is unlimited. I would like to make a stable purchase three silver coins and ten bronze coins for one. Please contact me if you have stock. Holy Light Guild offers three silver coins each. At the same time, in the Expeditionary Army Camp, the players here were even crazier. Without the antidote, there's no way to enter the ruins of the war to kill monsters. 
please sell them to us in private. It's not easy for us solo players to come here. Did the Silver Snow Guild get the inside information? They monopolized the antidotes in Iron Skull City. That player called Super Rich also has a lot of potions. He's earning like crazy. I'm so jealous. The entire regional chat channel was flooded. After experiencing the dark corrosion effect, they began to purchase antidotes crazily. But there was a shortage of potions. In order to ensure that their people could participate in the missions in the ruins of the war in the future, large guilds bought many potions. In such an intense market, it was too difficult for solo players to buy potions. Especially at this time, the Silver Snow Guild directly stopped selling the antidotes. I'm sorry, everyone. The antidotes of our Silver Snow Guild have been sold out. There's nothing left. It's sold out, it's sold out. Everyone, go buy it from Super Rich. We don't have any more. At the selling location of the Silver Snow Guild, the beautiful women helplessly persuaded the players who came to ask to buy it to leave. After everyone left, they found Twinkle Rose, who was killing monsters in the forest. Sister President, we sold 80,000 potions from our warehouse. We made a total of 2,400 gold coins. A beautiful player in charge of the finances calculated and said, however, did we set the price too low? It's indeed too low. I heard that Super Rich set the price at four silver coins at the beginning. Later, his business became too popular, and he even raised the price to five silver coins. He immediately made a killing. The beautiful archer beside her said seriously. Pfft. Twinkle Rose, who was waving her silver sword, nearly spat out blood. Whose sisters were they? We're doing this to build up our reputation in the future. Otherwise, if everyone thinks we're profiteers, who would be willing to join our guild? But doesn't our guild only accept young ladies? You. Come to my room tonight. No, leader, I can't stand it. Chapter 97, Black-Hearted Merchant, Getting Rich Overnight Brothers, there's no more potion. Don't surround me. I really don't have any left. Brother, believe me. Speak properly. Put away your saber first. In the other direction of the camp, Super Rich was surrounded by a group of players. However, without the potion, he could only explain to everyone one by one. It took him a lot of effort to persuade the customers to leave. After everyone left, Super Rich calculated his gains. This time, he had collected a total of 200,000 bottles of potions from the shops in Iron Skull City, half of which was given to the Silver Snow Guild. The remaining 100,000 bottles of potion were shipped here by more than a hundred people. Because the price of the potion was much higher than that of the beautiful women of the Silver Snow Guild, the final income was much higher. Excluding the cost, the final net profit should be 4,500 gold coins. This was equivalent to more than 20 million alliance dollars. Although this money was nothing to Super Rich, such a busy experience made Super Rich feel like he had returned to several decades ago. Didn't he run around like this when he was still a distributor? Looking at the gold coins in his bag, Super Rich felt a sense of accomplishment that he had not felt in a long time. Unfortunately, if not for the fact that those large guilds like to bully others, he would definitely have been able to raise the price of the potion to six silver coins, or even ten silver coins. It's all thanks to you, leader. Otherwise, I wouldn't have made so much money. Super Rich could not help but sigh. He could have such a result all because of the information of Tyrant. If not for this, he would not have known about this business opportunity. What was leader Tyrant doing? Just as Super Rich thought this, Suddenly, his gaze landed on the nearby forest. At the edge of the forest, a familiar figure walked out. It was the leader he thanked in his heart. He quickly greeted him. Leader. Super Rich ran up excitedly and said, You're finally here. Those players are crazy. My potions have been snatched up. 
Lorne saw him packing up and could not help but ask, Why are you only closing your stall now? In order to sell them at a high price, I chose to sell them in batches. Otherwise, I would have run out of stock within the first few hours. Super Rich had an excellent business sense and knew how to use the same goods to earn the most benefits. Therefore, there was no need for Lorne to think too much. Now, he only needed to follow his method to obtain enough profits. With that in mind, Lorne did not hesitate and immediately set up his stall in an area of the Expeditionary Army Camp. Goods, Antidote Potion Price, 3 Silver Coins Quantity, 100,000 Bottles First, he took out a portion of the potions to rile up the market. Then, he opened the regional chat of the Expeditionary Army Camp and spoke. Friends of Iron Skull City, in order to repay society, I have spent a large sum of money to send a batch of antidotes from Iron Skull City. If you want to purchase them, please arrive at the location of the stall as soon as possible to purchase them. The price is lower than three silver coins per bottle. The amount is limited, so the sale will end immediately. Friends of Iron Skull City Friends of Iron Skull City Three silver coins per bottle? The players thought that they had misheard. However, when they saw the identity of the person who shouted, they immediately went crazy. The person selling the potion was actually Tyrant who had been famous recently. He had divine equipment on him, but he dared to come here so brazenly. Gosh, this is going to be fun. Those large guilds are looking for him. He actually has the time to sell equipment. There's going to be a good show. I'll buy the potions first. Otherwise, I won't be able to buy it later. Only selling it for three silver coins per set? What a kind-hearted merchant. Brothers, let's hurry up. When the people from the large guilds come, they might take all the potions away. After the players received the news, they rushed to the target location. Compared to the super-rich ones who had increased their prices in succession, Tyrant, who only sold for three silver coins, was the kindest person in the world. The players rushed over. They bought a few bottles and prepared the items they needed for the next few days. Then, the people from the large guilds arrived. They bought more than 10,000 bottles of potions, emptying the remaining stock. The remaining players who came later could only stand on the spot and sigh. At that moment, Lorna's second batch of potions quickly arrived. There was another 100,000 doses. The price increased to four silver coins. Seeing this scene, all the players cursed. In the previous second, the potion was only three silver coins, but in the next second, the potion was four silver coins. This rate of price increase was even more detestable than that shameless super rich. It was no wonder that super rich had been standing behind Tyrant. It turned out that snakes and rats were in cahoots. However, although everyone was cursing Lorne's actions, their actions were very honest. All of them ran to the stall with silver coins and began to purchase the potions crazily. On the internet, people were very fierce, but in reality, they were submissive. This was a fact. Under the cover of large capital, ordinary players like them could not resist at all. If they did not buy Lorne's potion, they would not be able to farm monsters in the ruins of the war. They would have wasted three days of traveling. This was a result that no player was willing to accept. Soon, 100,000 potions were sold out. Lorne did not stop. He put down another 100,000 bottles of antidote, this time for five silver coins. Seeing that the price was rising again, the players became even crazier. He did not know what they were thinking. It seemed that the more expensive the potion was, the crazier they would be and the more they would buy. Seeing this scene, Super Rich was the most knowledgeable. When his career had just begun, he did such a thing as well. Those who bought potions crazily did not necessarily need this potion. They were just a group of stockholders. If they bought it at a lower commodity price now, after the price of the potions in the market increased, they could sell the goods to earn a profit. This was no different from speculating. 
such a situation occurred mainly because of the importance of the antidote to the War Ruins dungeon, and they knew very well that there was almost no stock in Iron Skull City. Therefore, in the current period of time, as long as there were potions, they would definitely be able to earn money. Sister Guild Leader, look. Tyrant is playing the same trick as Super Rich. They're also selling antidotes, but they made 30% more than us. In the direction of the Silver Snow Guild, a group of beautiful players looked enviously in Lorne's direction. Twinkle Rose, who had returned to the camp to replenish her supplies, could not help but clench her fists. She had been too careless, way too careless. How could she have sold all the potions for three silver coins? If she had not sold them all, the net profit from keeping them until now would have at least doubled. That was close to ten million dollars. She could have bought many branded bags. Wah! Chapter 98, Selling the Purification Crystals Because many players saw the potential of the antidote potion, they bought it in large quantities. Before long, the third batch of potions was sold out. These three batches of potions had a total of 300,000 bottles, bringing him an income of 12,000 gold coins. To be honest, even Super Rich was shocked by the speed at which he made money. It had only been three days since he started operating. In just three days, he had earned 50 to 60 million net income. This efficiency was comparable to a large corporation with tens of thousands of people. This was not all of Leader Tyrant's income. Super Rich knew very well that there were still 300,000 purification crystals in Tyrant's inventory. The value of this batch of goods was much higher than the potions. If he sold all of them, he could earn at least 200 million. At this moment, Lorne put up the last batch of potions he had. The price was then 10 silver coins. Instantly, the entire scene was in an uproar. F asterisk CK, 10 silver coins? Why don't you rob me instead? The price doubled while I was drinking water. This is too f asterisking ridiculous. You call this giving back to society? Pfft. Unscrupulous merchant. This kind of antidote only costs one silver coin per bottle in the shop of Iron Skull City. If you sell it for ten silver coins now, won't your conscience hurt at ten times the price? Even robbing a bank can't get as much money. All the players' emotions exploded. They collectively condemned Lorne for his immoral behavior. But at that moment, Lorne spoke in the chat, explaining that this batch of potions was the last batch of antidotes he had and that there would not be too many in the next few days. Therefore, they had to buy it as soon as possible. Hearing this news, the players continued cursing incessantly. However, countless players came to the scene to trade with Lorne. F asterisk CK, I've never eaten such an expensive medicine in real life. Being exploited by large capitalists in reality and being exploited by tyrant in the game, it's really hard for people to live. You unscrupulous merchant, quickly give me 500 bottles of potion. This kind of person is really detestable. Boss, I want 1000 bottles. They cursed as they traded. In fact, compared to them, Lorne was not a profiteer. Because after a while, this batch of potions bought at the price of 10 silver coins per bottle would definitely be sold to other players at a higher price. Therefore, the real profiteers were them. 10 silver coins for a bottle of potion was a very high price, so the selling speed decreased a lot. It took him an hour to sell all of them. Lorne made 10,000 gold coins. At this moment, there were no antidotes left in his bag. However, he still opened the regional chat channel. Hey brothers and sisters of Iron Skull City, in order to let everyone carry out the mission in the ruins of the war in peace, I have once again spent a huge sum of money to transport a batch of antidotes from Iron Skull City. Those who want to buy them can go to this location, click for coordinates. The quantity is limited, so the sale can stop at any moment. Damn. Upon hearing this information, all the players who had bought the antidote surrounded Lorne in fury. Because he had said that this was the last batch of antidotes, 
everyone endured the expensive price and bought these potions. But now, Tyrant was selling another batch. Wouldn't the players who had accumulated a large stock of potions lose so much that they would not have a penny left after this? Damn you, didn't you say that was the last batch of antidotes? That's right. To think that we trusted you so much. Evil merchant, return my hard-earned money. Return my hard-earned money. A group of players began to question Lorne, trying to use a collective voice to pressure him to return the silver coins he had cheated. However, Lorne calmly organized his items. Friends, I'm not lying to you. That is indeed the last batch of antidote I have. Then why are you selling more potions? A player was furious. Please look carefully, this is not an antidote, Lorne smiled as he said. Then, he sent the information picture of the purification crystal to the chat. When they saw the information, all the stockholders felt despair. This tool was even more effective than the antidote. One crystal could ensure that a player was not corroded by darkness for seven days. In this case, wouldn't the antidote in their hands be unsellable? Without these purification crystals, they could still sell these potions again for 11 to 12 silver coins in the next few days. But now, it was impossible. Not to mention a dozen silver coins, it was hard to say if they could even keep the price of 10 silver coins. If the number of purification crystals in Tyrant's hands was large, the value of the antidote would plummet. At that time, it might drop to 3 silver coins or even lower. As for them, the players who had accumulated a large amount of potions, they would lose everything. 30 silver coins for a purification crystal. It can last for 7 days and prevent the dark corrosion from affecting you. This seems to be much more cost effective than the potion. I want one. Give me three. Boss, give me ten. In the entire expeditionary army camp, there were 100,000 players in the first batch alone. After another three days of travel, many players in the main city had already reached level 20. They had set off two days ago and were gradually reaching the ruins of the war. Up until now, the second batch of level 20 players had also arrived. Therefore, there were at least 200,000 players in the current expeditionary army camp. In the next few days, this number would multiply. Therefore, there was no need for Lorne to worry about sales. These items would be sold out soon. As expected, the purification crystals worth 30 silver coins were sold out in a short period of time. The purification crystals brought him 30,000 gold coins. The previous antidote sale had given him 22,000 gold coins. In addition, there were 200,000 purification crystals in Lorne's pocket. After selling all these crystals, Lorne would really become a true billionaire overnight. It would be wonderful. Chapter 99, Fraud Heavens, Guild Leader, this tyrant has already made 100 million, right? The beautiful archer from the Silver Snow Guild said in an infatuated tone. The other beauties also casted envious looks at him. Although all of them were born into famous families, they were still young and wished to have such an experience. This way, they would have the right to speak in the family and reject the marriage arranged by the family. Twinkle Rose also looked enviously at the stall in front but said stubbornly, Don't envy him. Our reputation is much better than his. Super Rich could not help but mutter, Leader, you're too kind-hearted. A purification crystal that could last for seven days was only sold for thirty silver coins. This was too kind. If it were his own goods, this product would definitely be sold at 40 silver coins. After all, the average price of the poison potion could reach 5 silver coins. This crystal was equivalent to 7 bottles of potion. Although it was expensive to sell for 40 silver coins, those large guilds would still buy them. It is quite cheap indeed. Lorne felt the same way. He did not think of himself as a qualified capitalist. After all, he was not at the level where he wanted to suck everyone dry. After nearly two hours, the second batch of potions was sold out. At this moment, 
there were still about 100,000 purification crystals in Lorne's bag. This time, he did not choose to hoard them, but instead set them up in the stall for 30 silver coins. After selling these crystals, he went offline to count the money. He had killed monsters for the entire day, it was time to relax. While Lorne was planning this, suddenly, a team pushed through the crowd and walked out. It was a guild member from World Destruction. Hundreds of them pushed aside the surrounding players who were buying potions. One of the players pointed at Lorne and said, Deputy Guild Leader, he was the one who purposely cheated us of 5,000 gold coins. Upon hearing that, Lorne glanced at him. It turned out to be the second-hand merchant who had snatched the antidote earlier. Seeing that the potion bought at 10 silver coins was about to cause them a severe loss, he actually called the World Destruction Guild behind him to come find Lorne. This was interesting. 10 silver coins for a bottle of antidote. You are truly daring. The player who brought them here arrogantly walked to the stall and looked at Lorne in disdain, Tyrant, I believe you don't want to make a big deal out of this, and you don't want to provoke our World Destruction Guild. In that case, we'll give you a chance. As long as you sell these purification crystals to us for 20 silver coins, our guild can let bygones be bygones. How about it? As the deputy guild leader of the World Destruction Guild, Crossfire was confident enough. Even if he was facing a famous player like Lorne, he still showed a domineering attitude. 30 silver coins, not a cent less. Lorne did not budge. Do you have nothing to say for purposely scamming the funds of our guild? Crossfire's expression immediately turned unfriendly. In other words, you're calling this a fraud. Lorne frowned. This World Destruction Guild really knew how to cause trouble. Even if they lost money, they should blame their poor judgment. How could they come looking for him? Leader, it's them. When I sold the antidote earlier, they forced me not to raise the price. If I don't behave, they'll use force. Super Rich whispered. However, Lorne did not care at all. His expression even turned cold, I had never forced anyone to buy a potion from me. It's best if you guys can understand the situation. Oh? Does that mean that our World Destruction Guild is in the wrong? Crossfire smiled coldly as he unsheathed his machete, friend. I'm discussing this with you nicely now. If you really don't know your place, don't blame us for being rude. Being rude. Hearing this, the corners of Lorne's mouth curled up. He looked at Crossfire and smiled meaningfully, since you say so, I'll change my rule. Have you thought it through? No, no, no. Lorne shook his head, then stuck out a finger. I've decided that all players from the World Destruction Guild who want to buy the purification crystals will pay one gold coin each. F asterisk CKU. Crossfire was enraged as he slashed with the machete in his hand. However, Lorne easily dodged it. Attack, kill Tyrant and make him drop all his crystals. Crossfire lost his temper and issued the order to kill. For a moment, Hundreds of players from the World Destruction Guild waved their weapons. It was a spectacular sight. Leader, run. You have too many gold coins on you. I'll help you block them. Super Rich stepped forward and stood in front of Lorne. Although his level and fighting skills were pathetic, he was abnormally heroic at this moment. Run. Behind him, the corners of Lorne's mouth curled up. He was not moved by the hundreds of enemies before him. Instead, he took out his short staff. Then, he waved the Sage's Wisdom short staff in his hand. Come out, demon hounds from hell. As soon as he finished speaking, a huge magic circle appeared on the ground, and hundreds of hideous hell hounds appeared. Gosh! Where are the monsters coming from? Why are there so many summoned monsters? Is this Tyrant's skill? Oh my god! No wonder Tyrant was not worried. He is already so powerful. Are you sure this is a summoner? I'm also a summoner. Why can I only summon one wild wolf? The surrounding players were all shocked. 
the players from the World Destruction Guild were also shocked by the scene before them. They clearly had the advantage in numbers, but now, there were more than 200 monsters. They had actually become the disadvantaged party. Fortunately, these hellhounds were ordinary in strength. With a few slashes, the monsters would be quickly wiped out. But as they thought so, suddenly, a black figure appeared in the crowd. In the eyes of a priest player from the World Destruction Guild, a figure in a cloak flashed past. Her slender arms swept across elegantly, and then two damage numbers appeared above the player's head. Minus 1345. Minus 2800, critical. Ordinary attack and backstab, instantly dealt 4,000 plus damage. At the current stage, most players, including warriors, would rarely have more than 4,000 health points if they did not put all their attribute points into constitution. Therefore, he was naturally killed instantly. After killing the other party, the cloaked girl entered stealth mode again. Then, a player beside her was directly killed by a critical hit. Chapter 100, A Stage That Belongs to Aisha Minus 2800, Critical Minus 2910, Critical Minus 2790, Critical Minus 2870, Critical Minus 2810 The cloaked girl's skills were used like they had no cooldown. She walked in the darkness forever and every strike dealt critical damage. At this stage, in order to increase their damage output, the cloth armor class professional players would not increase their defense. Only an unspecialized priest would do something so silly. However, because of this, their health points were only about 1,500. Some did not even have 1,000. Facing the damage of nearly 3,000 points from Aisha, these people had no room to fight back. 5 kills. 10 kills. 15 kills. 20 kills. Almost in an instant, Aisha transformed into a phantom that weaved through all the enemies and used her sharp blades to cut off the heads of a large number of players. Seeing this scene, all the surrounding players widened their eyes. My god, I see over 2,800 damage. How can there be such a powerful existence? What was that? It disappeared in an instant. Could it be a ghost? Why is that shadow always dealing critical damage? Deputy Guild Leader. An assassin is hiding near us. All the long-range attackers in our team have died. A group of shield warrior players looked at the souls of their teammates who fell behind them, but there was nothing they could do. The assassin's skill was too powerful. It could actually remain invisible indefinitely. Damn it. Crossfire was furious, forget about these hellhounds. Let's rush over and kill Tyrant first. When fighting a summoner like Lorne, it was always best to kill him. As long as he was killed, his pets would automatically disappear. Otherwise, in such a situation, all of them would have been killed by that assassin pet. Kill. Under the command of the Crossfire, all the players of the World Destruction Guild rushed forward. Dozens of them pointed their blades at Lorne. However, before they could get close, black arrows set the area on fire. Swish. 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 Countless arrows fell like mad. At the same time, a green rain of arrows covered everyone's path. Minus 1155. Minus 1,099. Minus 1,217. Dash 1223. High damage numbers popped up on the heads of the players. Their health points instantly decreased to more than 2,000 points. This level of damage made the surrounding players shocked. These were all level 20 elite players, there were tens of them. Tyrant had reduced their health by half in such a short time. Moreover, the attack speed of the two archer pets in front of him was very fast. Two arrows shot out from their hands every second, harvesting the warrior players in front of them. In addition, there was an assassin hiding in the darkness. 
the sharp blades in her hands were like the scythe of the death god. Every time she waved them, she would take a life. Seeing this scene, the surrounding players even forgot to breathe. Only at this moment did they truly see how terrifying a player equipped with a divine equipment was. Damn it, I'll kill you even if I die. The eyes of Crossfire shone with a ferocious light. The battle had just begun for less than a minute, but he had already lost dozens of elite players. Not to mention that everyone had lost a level, they had also been sent back to the main city. If he wanted to come to this place again, it would take at least three days. To the World Destruction Guild, this was a huge loss. If he did not kill this culprit, it would be hard to resolve the hatred in his heart. Crossfire went crazy. He raised his machete and charged at Tyrant. With three silver-grade equipment on him, he could definitely hack that hateful guy into mincemeat. Hey, big face, you can't be disrespectful to our great master. In the sky, the long-tongued bat swooped down. A ball of thick fog emerged from its body, and twenty small bats spread out. They surrounded the head of the crossfire and interfered with his vision. This was originally a long-tongued bat's escape skill, but it was also very effective in interfering with enemies. Crossfire immediately lost his sense of direction. Before he could get rid of the annoying bats, he realized that his health was decreasing rapidly. Pew! 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 Minus 1001. Minus 1017. Minus 993. Three arrows landed on him, instantly taking all his health points. Crossfire blacked out as his body fell to the ground, then turned into a ball of white light. It was ridiculous. One had to know that the crossfire had three silver grade items on him, but he was also instantly killed. It had taken him three days to reach the current location. Here, he was sent back to the main city before he could even dig up the skeleton of an Iron Skull City's warrior. Who could stand this? Boss. Beside him, the shield warrior player who had been protecting Crossfire was also stunned. However, before he could think too much, he was killed by a series of arrows. Around him, the other players also encountered the same thing. Countless arrows poured down, and the players from the World Destruction Guild were all killed. From the beginning of the battle to the end, Lorne had not moved. The entire battle was completed by the pets. What surprised him the most was Aisha's combat strength. Although she was only level 6, she dealt the most terrifying damage in the team. All of this was thanks to her 3660 plus attack points. Even if the damage was reduced by 60%, she could still control the entire battlefield. Master, it's because I am too weak. Otherwise, those warriors would not have been able to reach you. Aisha came to Lorne and lowered her head in self-blame. It's not your fault. You've only been awake for a short time. It's already very impressive that you can do this. With a soft smile, Lorne raised a hand to remove Aisha's hood and caress her silver hair. Aisha stood rooted to the ground, staring at Lorne. Only when she realized that she was being stared at did she close her eyes, shyly enjoying the warmth of the moment. As an elf, Aisha's skin was so smooth that it made all women jealous, especially as a night elf. It made her snow-white skin have a hint of silver under it. Other than master, all humans are greedy. How detestable! Seeing the surrounding players' gazes gather, Aisha could not help but frown. Lorne pulled up her hood, go back first. After selling these potions, I need to rest. Yes. A light appeared over Aisha, and in the next second, she was gone. Lorne ordered Super Rich to clean up the battlefield. Then, as if nothing had happened, he continued manning his stall. After dealing with the remaining purification crystals, Lorne entered the forest and found a hiding spot to go offline. 